Rusty S from Video Game Heaven. They only ready for this. I don't even know if I'm ready for this. Oh my god, what happened to your head, dude? Just wanted to give a shout out to everybody at Brotastic Nerdum. The Brotastics, you guys should be doing restaurant reviews. <laughs> Those of you turning in might have heard of Bandai's legacy line they're putting out. They're doing Megazords, they're doing figures of the Rangers, they're doing roleplay items like Morphers. But this, this is not the Bandai legacy line. No, this is the Bandai Tamashi Nation's Soul of Chigokin. This is to go even further beyond. This is the plus ultra of Dinozords. I can't tell you how excited I was when they announced this and how pretty it is. Such a feat of die cast metal and plastic in a box. Beautiful. And I can't wait to show you each and every part of it. But before I do that, I need... Dinosaur power! Starting things out with the Pterodactyl Sword, while it may be simple, it is still beautiful to look at. The die cast meddling in the front, as well as the shininess of the wings, really pops out at you and shows that this can be displayed as its own piece. The cannons that they use for the feet themselves have a great level of detail that's showing that they're really not skipping anything here with this line. The back, as well as with the red etching, has very distinct color, something that's going to be a common theme throughout this review. Even in its sort of flight mode, it's very well posable, very well displayable. They show a great level of detail that you can see and appreciate. Looking next at the Tabertooth Tiger Sword, I don't even know where to start. The tires are molded out incredibly. The head has so many little details here and there. The teeth themselves are painted silver so that they pop. The eyes look incredible. The ears are, oddly enough, probably my favorite part of this. The silver in the back legs is incredibly shiny. It looks just like what they use for the pterodactyl sword. The detailing on both the feet have great claws. The tail, which I really love, is extendable so that it can go in cleanly but have a better look when it's solo. One of my favorite things with the saber tooth tiger sword is its posability. It matches probably the T-Rex sword, which you'll see later, and just how many different poses you can put it in. It moves, everything moves on a very clean ratchet, so it holds where you've put it pretty damn well. I have tried doing a number of different poses on this, and I've yet to see maybe when some of the weight gets on the feet, it becomes a little bit too much. But aside from that, you can pretty much put it in whatever pose you'd like, and it'll stay. I love this one. While not as poseable or... While it doesn't have as many points of articulation, the Triceratops sword is nothing to look past. It, just as well as the other, looks beautiful with its blue paint job. The white looks great on it. Each and every tire that goes with the tread looks fantastic, as well as the tread itself being wonderfully detailed. They have nice little vents on the side and the front that sort of give it that machine look, if you know what I mean. The back has an incredible level of these little thrusters I guess they're adding on. The tail with its cannons look great as well as the other side. One great little feature to, that they added to this is you can pull out the horns and they have a chain attached to them which was an attack that the Triceratops sword had in the show and I was really surprised by this when I found out that they had it. It just looks great and it was something they didn't really have to add in. The mouth itself Though, word of caution, if you push the mouth all the way in, it is a bit finicky to get out. It really likes to stay stuck. The neck itself can move up and down on a ratchet, which is mainly for transforming, but if you want to use it for posing, you can do that as well. Another great thing they added into the Triceratops sword was that the treads on either side can be pushed in, as well as the legs themselves can be collapsed inside of the Triceratops, in order to give it a slimmer look in its completed Megazord form. And that makes all the difference, I think. That was something that the Voltron Legendary series, I think, really needed from the Netflix. So I'm glad they did this to give it a unique look. 
Moving on to my second place favorite Zord, the Mastodon Zord, as with the rest of the line, is immaculately detailed from the small details in the feet to the lining of the back panels, which if you'll notice, the Legacy Dinosaur and the 90s Dinosaur didn't have. It just sort of had an open space where you saw the fists. The Solo Chagokin line is adding these sort of back panels that go in and out uh, and can be folded neatly for the Megazord form. The head has a wonderful matte finish compared to the rest of the Zord, which is much more glossy. And I really appreciate it because it makes it stand out not only in this form, but again, in its Megazord form. The trunk has three points of articulation and looks great, as well as having those two little jets in the front design. The head has some pretty good uh, posability. It, it can move up and down, which is more than what we had before. Ultimately, not the most in articulation, but really just gorgeous in my opinion. And last but certainly not least, the T-Rex Zord, a piece that I believe could have been sold entirely on its own with its incredible paint job, its articulation, the silver, the red, the yellow, so many little details here and there from the feet, their ability to move in a complete 360, the back vents, the back vents, there's so much detail on the back of this figure, something that will be so rarely seen. The arms themselves have movable claws. They can not only move up and down, but they can move out for a sort of, um, I guess, attacking pose. Anything you could really go for. We have fully molded cannons inside of the mouth, as well as beautifully detailed and pieced out teeth for each and every tooth. And lastly, a great thing that actually works out in more than just a T-Rex form, but will work out a bit in the Megazord form, is the tail is a beautifully articulated, each and every segment of tail, one being able to come out entirely for combination, can be moved, can be posed. And from head to toe, you can see that not a detail is skipped, and that's what I'm really, really loving about this. All right, guys, let's start combining and getting everything ready for the tank mode. Push the mount in, flip the teeth up, one leg, two leg. Everything moves on a nice ratchet. You just go ahead and move the feet into these little ports. Everything fits nicely. Everything feels really secure. The tail, boop. And that's it for the saber tooth tiger. As we mentioned before, the triceratops treads move in. And then the legs. And the tail, which fits very nicely in its port and they are done. Ooh, one last thing, is that each one has a nice little cover hole that keeps both the legs stable and gets rid of that unsightly porthole. Yeah, those are ready. Next, we'll show how to transform the T-Rex Zord. Just move that arm in, that arm in, pull out the pegs, like so, and replace that, another peg, another replace, get them facing forward, and that's where these panels right here really come in handy. Here, you'll see it better on this one. But yeah, where that one sort of comes out, that looks a lot better. And make sure it's sitting flat. Whoop. With the tail. Straighten everything out. And that is just about ready. There. And you'll have these sort of sitting flat, and that's how you know you got it right. Sitting flat, and the pegs are facing straight, and everything's neat with the tail. And last thing you want to do is pop out this little panel, and that's where the Macedon head will sit. And there you have the T-Rex sword done. Next up is getting the Macedon, which basically you just kind of tear them apart and flay them. Yeah, one thing to be noting of is that this is pretty secure with one pad here and two tabs here. So you just sort of give it a nice pull. Don't be worried about pulling too hard. Woo! And I always drop it. But yeah. You'll go ahead and, I don't know why I did the wave there. You go ahead and push this in and pull this guy out which can be a bit finicky. There we go. And this will sort of clip on to the uh, T-Rex part. 
Uh, another thing you can do is you can move these in. I don't really recommend it because it's hard to get back out, but you can do that. After you have the head ready, you'll go ahead and lay this guy out. Another cool thing, like I said, and I'll show you how, is to bring out that M and this stores inside and like that. And it looks really good. And you'll keep the leggies out. Second step, same as the first, pulling it out, pushing the panel in and pushing it down so it looks nice and neat. And with the nice little ratchets, everything stays really nicely and the Mastodon is ready to go. One last thing worth mentioning about the Mastodon for the Pterodactyl to connect is you want to tab out these little guys on either of the front feet and that's sort of where the body of the Pterodactyl will connect. I didn't forget the Pterodactyl, I just figured it wasn't worth mentioning, but yeah, head out, wings in, done. All right, focus. Now that you have everything done on that part, let's start combining. Ooh, don't forget the cannons. All right, so peg into peg. There, until you hear a nice snap. Same with the Triceratops Zord. And those will sit nicely like that. Next, flip around everything. Let me move that around so I can do that cleanly. Woo! The little pegs here will peg into the side arms of the T-Rex, which is different from how they did it in the 90s Zord, and I really much appreciate this because I think it's much more sturdy. And they just, until you, you don't really hear a click there, but you know it's in. Move the arms up, move the arms up, done, done. Keep everything nice and straight. The cannons, with the tab on the back, go in like so, go in like so. The elephant head will clip in with this into there if I can get it nice and smoothly. All right, there we go. And that's done. And fix those again. Lastly is the most annoying part of all this, and that is getting, now watch. Our object is to get these teeny, and I'm gonna refocus here, these teeny little slits there and there onto those back tabs. And it is impossible. So uh, my only <laughs> word of advice, keep on at it. Because I'm probably going to do a cut to where I finally get it. It is the only thing I don't really care about this sword. If you guys know of an easier way of doing this who own it, please, please leave a comment. Oh, nope. I almost got one. All right. I'm cutting this. Boop. Okay. After much headache, I got it in. Um, and it usually takes me a while, and I thought I could do it while just kind of reaching over awkwardly, but it didn't work out. The best um, advice I can give you is to, with your thumb, hold the plastic tab, and then with your middle finger, push down and basically where the spot is on the crest of the pterodactyl, and push. And you'll feel, you'll feel it clip in. It clips in very securely, but it just is a hell of a time to get in. And then after you've reclipped in that, you have the tank mode done. Everything looks great. Everything fits really well. The tank mode itself is very secure. Looks really neat. All the way around. All right, so we'll start with the legs. Saber tooth tiger on a ratchet, really nice and secure. Foot up, foot up. A nice little feature here is you can pull this out and it gives it a little bit more stability while it is a leg. The Triceratops is not much different. Just move that ratchet very secure, so be careful when you're moving it. Push that in a little bit more. Mouth closed. Legs. All right, getting the pterodactyl is just as easy. With one extra step, bring the wings out. Head fits very nicely. And you'll bring out these little tabs 
on the wings, and that's what will tab into the front of the T-Rex. All right, the T-Rex is very particular, meaning it doesn't like to move unless you do everything right. For instance, the head won't come down unless you tilt it down. That is the only way the head will come out and reveal the beautiful head sculpt. And then you just take the two horns, separate, and attach. The knees will come back. You'll sort of move in that digit again, just like that. And the feet woo, will rest. Tail comes out for later, and it clips back in very securely there. Move that up, move that up, and you are good to go. Mastodon is pretty much ready to go from tank mode. The only thing is remove the cannons and replace them with the pegs in the back, like so. Like so. Oh, go in, go in, there we go. And the arms will go down and the hands will turn out, like so. And badow. And but out. There you have the Mastodon ready to connect to the T Rex sword. Yeah. All right, now I know I'm going to do a couple cuts to race the camera for this, but let's start combining everything. We'll take the two legs and place them and peg in like you did with the tank mode. Sit securely, peg and Peg. Very nice. Raising up. All right, next we'll take the Mastodon, move the tail down, Mastodon in, we'll just peg and peg, like so. There you have the Mastodon ready to go. Lastly, like we said before, you'll take the two pegs of the pterodactyl and peg them into those slots there. Push the tail back in, take the mastodon head, pull this all the way out so that he can hold it in his hand. Final step, and before I do this, I want to give off the detail of this sword and just how pretty it is. It's even like thick too. The handle's done really nice in a black. The gold detailing is great. Love it. And just like the shield, you place it in his hand very easily and it fits very nicely and there you have it highlighting the articulation on the arms you can see that the arm itself moves a full 360 degrees on a ratchet you can also spin it 360 degrees you get a nice elbow joint that goes out to there as well as a really nice feature is the hand is posable with a posable thumb but yeah the hand can move in for posing, 360 degrees. Another fantastic point is the head being able to spin 360 so you can have it looking in whatever direction you'd like. Hey, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe to our social media pages. Now, what's the scouter say? It's under 9,000. Oh!